Welcome to the long overdue Bilstein B16 review featuring my F30 335 and F80 M3. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. I guess about two years ago, we put Bill Stein B16s on my F30. We really liked them, and we ended up putting the same exact setup on my F80 M3. And about two years ago, I promised you a review. So today, we're gonna do that. <laughs> what we're going to do for this review is we are going to start with the F30 335 X Drive, and then we're going to do the F80 M3. If you just wanna skip ahead to the F80 M3, we're gonna have timestamps down below in the description. Just click it and it'll send you into the future. Starting with the F30, let's talk about it, walk around it, and then we'll go for a drive. So before we get started with too much information on this, this is an X Drive car, which means it's all wheel drive. The all wheel drive setups will never ride as low as a rear wheel drive setup. The reason for that is because rear wheel drive cars don't have front axles, so it doesn't really matter how low you go. You just have to obviously watch your fender where X drive cars or all wheel drive cars are going to have an axle in the front. And what happens is once you start to go too low, your CV will actually start to disconnect and then you're going to snap your joint and then you're gonna have to buy a new axle. This axle that we just replaced on Chris's car was about $850. So it's not something that you wanna ever break. And Bill Stein does a really good job because they don't chance it. They know exactly how low the car can go safely and they pretty much stop you. So this is actually, from a functional standpoint, as low as you can go with the Bill Stein B16. Now, if you look in here, you will see that I could technically thread it a little bit lower. We're not gonna get too crazy into this, but if I did that, I would have no preload and then the car rides like garbage. So basically with preload, you wanna have a little bit of pressure on your spring. So as you're driving down the road and you're hitting bumps, your wheels are moving up and down, what's actually happening if you don't have the right amount of preload is your suspension, like your strut or whatnot, will actually leave the, the spring and then come back down. You never wanna have that full loss of pressure. Um, otherwise, what's gonna happen is the car is just gonna ride like trash. I originally had this actually about here and it just rode horribly and it's not intended to ride there so it's not exactly Bill Stein's fault it's just it's a limitation of the X Drive car. So like I was saying with the Bill Stein B16 you are not going to be the lowest but it is a very safe drop height. If you go with one of the very cheap ones on the market they don't really care how low you go they don't really care if you break your axles they're going to give you that look you're going for but you may end up paying for it over time. Now that we talked about the front this is where my rear sits on these 19 inch variant wheels. Um, I, again, I could probably go maybe a half inch more, but otherwise you're gonna start to lose that preload and it's not gonna ride all that great. Now, you may be thinking if you're new to suspension, like, hey Brian, like the car has axles in the back. Why does it not matter as much in the back? Well, the thing that I forgot to explain is when you're driving, it's not just up and down like this. In the front, when you turn your wheel, your wheel is actually pulling away. So there's an additional element where in the rear, you just don't have that. So you can you could typically go a lot lower in the rear than the front. So to sum it up, as I was saying, if you're looking for more of a drop like this, it's a little bit more subtle, it's not crazy aggressive, but it doesn't have that four by four look that it comes with from the factory, Bill Stein B16s are a great option. Let's jump in the car and talk about how they drive. All right, let's take this out on the road and see how it drives. So the first thing that you're going to notice when you get in a car that has Bill Stein B16s, the ride is much more aggressive. It's a very firm feeling. Um, now with this specific kit, it does have this button that we put in. So if you look over here, you can see we have sport mode or we have a comfort mode. I will say the difference isn't as drastic as I would have preferred. Um, the comfort mode and the sport mode, they feel pretty similar. I asked Bill Stein if there was a way that we could alter that at all, and they said that there's not. They just have it preset. Um, I leave it in sport all the time. Now you will notice that it is a hair softer in comfort mode, but what the heck. It's so close, I just drive with it in sport, and I don't actually touch the button. Now that being said, I will say that I wish I got one that was more adjustable. I know a lot of the kits are actually manually adjustable. I, I will say that I, I wish I got that kit instead of this because 
that isn't as, I don't really want to say extreme, but it's not as noticeable as I would have really liked it. There's also a lot more wires that you have to install to do that. And we have a full video if you're curious on the actual installation of that. We have it down in the description below. Um, don't get me wrong, I love the B16s on this car. I think they ride amazing. They really firm up the whole feel of the entire car. The F30, I think it's just incredibly soft. And the suspension that I went from was completely shot. So it was already, you know, going from suspension that was completely trash to you know one of the best suspensions that are available for this car so um, that being said it was already a pretty drastic difference but one thing that you will notice right away especially if you don't have the right preload is you're gonna feel a lot more bumps now I'm running on 19 inch variant xenons um, with decently low profile tires but they are not run flats at all and it's a little bit of a combination of me going up a size and tire, but at the same time, I went from you know the extremely firm sidewall of the run flat to a standard tire. So yes, I, I went to a smaller tire, but at the same time, the sidewalls on the tire are also softer. So it's kind of hard to say, you know, does the tire and, and wheel size have an impact? Now, if you're running 20 inch tires with super low profile, like I do on the F80, then it's gonna really matter a lot. But for all intents and purposes, going to this tire size, I don't think it really affected the ride too much. Um, I mean, who knows? Actually, it probably, probably made it a little bit softer. All right, so like I was saying, I'm not sure if you can see it in the, the camera. You can, I'm not sure what my microphone's picking up either, but you can definitely feel every little bump. It is definitely not a soft setup. Um, is it jarring like you do some low quality lowering springs without doing proper struts and, and shocks? No, it's, it's not that bad, um, but it definitely gives you a very, very firm ride, which is great for the track, especially if you do things like a strut race, VAC monoballs, you know, sway bars, that kind of stuff. Um, on this car right now, we have a strut race, we have the Vilsheim E16s, and Really, that's it. We, we haven't done our mono balls yet, although we have them at the shop. We're gonna probably do them in a couple weeks. We did those on Chris's F30 340, and they were a night and day difference. So I can't wait to actually get those installed on here with some other surprise components. But we're gonna keep this just to the Bilstein B16. Um, like I said, we don't really have all that much done on this car suspension wise besides this. and. Really the strut brace, and the reason I, I bring that up is because it really helps tighten the entire front end. Um, definitely a great upgrade if you haven't considered that yet. Now as far as the actual handling aspects, um, it does feel much more planted and I feel like I have a lot less body roll than I used to before. I'll try not to get Zach too sick here, but um, it's just, it, it feels great. Like I said, here's some bumps like, the, bump, the bumps are a little bit rough, but the cornering and whatnot, especially if you're on the track, unbelievable setup. Now, if this is a daily driver for you and if you are not looking for a track-oriented build, maybe get ones that are a little bit more adjustable. Um, the other thing with Bill Stein, it's just, it's just kind of always how it's been, even before everything pandemic-related. Um, it's a little bit difficult to get the product in um, it's either you you have a couple or you have none and it could be a little while's wait to actually get your your hands on a set now I'm not gonna say exactly how many months or years it took me to get the set for this car um, but they were out of stock for a long 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 time now with the F80 um, that set and we're gonna talk about that in just a second those are typically easier accessible um, than these. I, I'm not really sure why. I know Bill Stein makes a lot of OEM parts, so I know that there's a, a strong focus to you know make sure that the, the OEMs are happy. Make sure that you know we, we just took apart a uh, an Audi R8 2017 V10 Plus, and if the stock suspension is Bill Stein, so I know that they have very strict contracts to meet the demands of some of these you know OEM companies and whatnot, some of these auto manufacturers, and sometimes I feel like this might take the back burner, but once you get a set, 
they're unbelievable and they also hold the resale value because they are harder to get it's it's a more expensive unit um, but the quality is 100% there now as I mentioned earlier I do have the one that has this little button I'll put it in comfort mode for a little while again it eases some of the bumps it doesn't it doesn't make it a drastic change or anything like that um, like I said before, if I had to do it again, I would probably do the ones that are manually adjustable just because you have the ability to set them whatever you want to. You aren't going to really be changing them every single day. Maybe if you go to a track, maybe you want to tighten them up or something like that. Um, but other than that, it's pretty much set it and forget it. If you do have EDC, the electronic dampening, which this car does not have, that's why I had the ability to put this system in that has that little button, you will need to um, either the KW has a delete kit that we have on our website. We're going to have all the parts and tools and all that um, down in the description below. But or you're going to have to have it coded out. Otherwise, you're going to have a, uh, a light that's going to come up and it's going to be quite annoying. Now, this car, like I said, I don't have EDC in here, so I don't actually need that delete kit. But it's, it's pretty easy to do whether you, know, you have it or not. So overall, I'm very happy with this setup. Um, it, it rides, like I said, the, the biggest thing is it doesn't go super low and it rides kind of firm, um, but it's not really the end of the world. I don't drive this car as much as you would think. Um, I probably put a thousand miles on it, maybe, over the last year, because um, we have a couple cars. And um, so I don't really drive it a tremendous amount, but um, like I said, I mean, super happy with the kit. I would, I would definitely do you know, Bill Stein B16s again, like I said, I would do that, the manually adjustable ones instead of uh, this one per se, but overall, it's a great kit and I've been very happy with it. So let's head back and we'll talk about the F80 system. Okay, so that sums up everything for the F30. Let's shift our focus to the F80 M3. So as you can see, this car sits a little bit lower. We have it again, pretty much maxed out for as low as it can go. Bill Stein is not the lowest suspension setup you can get, but it is a great handling setup. Um, so not as much to talk about because the F80 only comes in rear wheel drive, so it's not like you have an all wheel drive option yet for the M3, will very soon. Um, but overall, I think it looks great. Could I go you know, a half inch lower or could I sacrifice a little bit of the ride quality to get it a little bit further down? Yes, I 100% could but I wanted it to be the best riding car while looking great. So let's jump in and see how it drives. Now, unlike my F30 335 that does not have EDC, my F80 M3 actually does have electronic suspension. Um, what's really cool is Bill Stein did not put a button. This is again the B16s in here. They actually have it where it literally just plugs into that connection. So it's plug and play. You don't have to run all these wires through the car. And it actually works a lot better. Let's mess around with it here. I'll put it in comfort. It's a lot more noticeable than on the 335. Um, again, it's not like crazy night and day, but if you're going over bumps and whatnot, especially if you know, you're driving, like around here we live by Philadelphia, if we're driving around Philly, put it in comfort because sport will ruin your day. <laughs> um, it's just really firm and you know, it's the same exact thing as the, the B16s in the 335. I personally think the 335 system rides a little bit more harsh than the F80, which seems a little bit backwards, but um, this is one of those mods where when I first had my wife in the car, she's like, why does the car ride weird? So she, for her, it was a little bit too rough, um, but overall, it, you definitely feel like you have a more performance-oriented cars, but especially with this car with the, with the 20 inch wheels, again from Variant and pretty skinny tires, you could definitely feel a lot. Now again, I'm in comfort right now. I'm gonna flip it over to Sport Plus and it's not crazy night and day, but like I said, like if you're driving in terrible roads in a city and whatnot and you have it in comfort, you have it in Sport, you're gonna definitely feel the difference. But like I said, it's not gonna be like, oh, it's so comfortable and like, oh wow, I'm a race car now. Um, it's it's not that extreme. Now with this car, I'm actually pretty happy with how it rides. Um, I would not elect to do the manually adjustable ones for this car like I would for the 335. Um, the F80 just has better suspension components. 
Um, it's it's just how it is. I mean, that's kind of why the M cars are so much more money because they have upgraded components in them. And you know, when I had the F30, I know a lot of the rear-wheel drive F30 guys they upgrade to M front suspension. So um, it's definitely an upgrade to the other system. So as you'd expect, the F80 already has a little bit nicer setup. So it's not as night and day um, as going from you know stock suspension to upgraded suspension like the Wilson V16. Um, but it's definitely still a great improvement. Now, as you probably know, the F80 steering is a thousand times tighter, very responsive. So you're not gonna get a lot of those, those steering feels necessarily out of an F80. Um, you will notice that you don't have as much body roll. Now with the F80, you traditionally have less body roll than an F30 anyway. Um, but it's still a great addition to the car. Um, but the one thing is it's definitely a firmer suspension. If you are going to be commuting long distances, I am gonna say this might not be the suspension for you, um, unless you don't really care. I mean, I'm, I'm one of those guys where right now, my commute isn't all that bad. Um, but even if it was a longer commute, just to have like a sportier driving car, I don't know, I think it's worth it and it's just, it's just a lot more fun. All right, so here's a little turn. Again, yeah, we're not going crazy fast around it, but the car just feels just incredibly planted and it's such a fun car to drive but with the suspension if you're tracking your car it's going to feel incredible um, it, it's really hard to describe suspension with different setups especially you know dampening and whatnot but it, I'll say it's 15% stiffer than than factory so you know your, your comfort mode is now like your sport plus mode and then your sport mode is above that so um, if you're looking for a firmer ride this is a great setup if you're looking for a softer ride or something that is you know the same ride quality but lowers the car this might not be the suspension setup for you which is fine because it's not it's not like there's one suspension out there and you have to love it now what i love about this suspension setup is i do have edc and it's 100% plug and play. They use the factory connectors and it just makes the installation incredibly easy. Um, if you don't have EDC, there's a non-EDC version as well that installs just as easy, but it is manually adjustable. Um, like I said, I prefer that on the 335, but for this car, I think how they have it set up um, is pretty good. I wouldn't really change a tremendous amount. But overall with the Vilsheim V16 across the board, um, if you are looking for a more mild drop and a firmer ride, it's a really great system. Um, like I said, with the 335, if you are looking to slam your car, Ghost 9 is not the way to go because it doesn't allow you to really slam the car because they focus more on ride quality and overall performance. And honestly, if your car is super low, it's not really set up for ideal performance anyway. So it's probably not a good fit. But hey, if you're looking for, you know, the daily driver that's also a weekend warrior, which is really what this car is, it's not a dedicated track car or anything. It's just, it's just a really great setup. Minimal body roll, tons of fun. So to sum it up, it's actually, I'm actually really glad that we have it on two cars because it's very identical on both cars um, with the ride quality and whatnot. Like I said, as long as you are preloading your suspension correctly, it's going to ride great, but it is going to be significantly firmer um, than your OEM setup. If you try to slam it too much, it's not gonna ride nice at all. Um, but just be aware that it is more of a subtle drop geared towards performance. And that's kind of what I'm going for. I don't, I'm over super low cars that I have to feel like I'm, I'm just scraping every single day, day in and day out. Um, just been there, done that, and don't really want to do that again. So I would prefer a more conservative drop and better ride quality. So with that, I hope that this little review was beneficial to someone out there who is considering the Bilstein B16s 
And if you are interested in any of the products that we talked about, we're gonna have links for you down in the description. And if you need help picking out maybe another suspension, we'd be happy to help with that as well. So you can feel free to message our guys. Again, we'll have contact info and whatnot down below. Once again, my name is Brian. That's Zach behind the camera struggling to keep it steady with the bumps here. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.